For a long time, it had been debated if the color computer could create a true 3D game along the lines of the great PC classics like Doom and Wolf 3D. Marty McFly said the color computer was too slow to do the necessary 3D calculations, but my dog Einstein and I deduced it could be possible. Now the great John Kowalski came along and made the impossible possible. Great Scott! He developed an algorithm that did the necessary calculations fast enough to create the good demo that was called Gloom! And it took 1.21 gigawatts to make this happen. Good eye, everybody. I am the original gamer, Stevie Stroh, coming to you from down under in South Florida. And what are we looking at here today, boys and girls? And by the way, I'm joined by Nick Morantos. Good eye, Nick. Good eye, everyone. Good eye. And uh, we're looking at the <laughs> Gloom demo. And this was a nice little piece of software that Sock Master threw together, proving that the Coco 3 could do. And look how fast the frame rates are in this. This is a little 3D demo. Um, it's moving quite quickly. I've got color. Um, I'm, I, I, I see here that in this demo I can run through walls, but that's cool. But we're looking at a 3D engine. We're looking at like a Wolfenstein 3D, Doom 3D type engine where we've got uh, 3D first person perspective scrolling and at a very, very good frame rate. So I guess this was a demo. Nick, correct me if I'm wrong. This that's is basically. Right. Yeah. Um, Sock Master said, uh, yes, it can be done, and let me show you that it can be done, and this was it. He actually created the routine so they can use in one of the uh, the Game Boy games that it was developing. So oh, wow. he, created, he created the engine on the color computer to, to prove the point that 3D was possible, and then he took this engine that he made to create a Game Boy game, and this was the uh, fruits of his, uh, of his efforts. The, uh, the the next big um, uh, um, discussion on the uh, the Coco list was that okay that's fair enough you've made a 3D um, environment but how do you make a game out of it you know it's not a game where's the the, the guns and where's the where uh, the yes. and all that right. so people were then saying well well that's that's a fancy demo but what, what about a game so that's when I came in and I. I, I spoke to John Kowalski, and of course my maths is terrible, so he had to um, explain how this um, his algorithm worked, um, and eventually I created my own 3D game um, based on John Kowalski on this engine. It is an era of high technology, an era of perfection, an era of mind-enhancing brain implant devices. With these devices, a person's abilities can be enhanced while disabilities removed. Millions of people worldwide have undergone surgery to have devices installed to reap the benefits of an improved lifestyle. But there is now evidence to prove that there is more to these devices than creating the perfect human. Leaked information has revealed that each implant has means of remote control via the low orbit satellite system, also owned and operated by the same company creating these implants. This has been found to be used as a form of mind control, allowing the CEO of the company to control things such as the outcome of an election, the buying habits of consumers, even invoke death. You are the gate crasher and it is time to crash this party. Destroy all the computer data and defeat the evil CEO himself. <laughs> Good eye, everybody. I am the original gamer, Stevie Stroh, and I am joined by Nick Marentes, the author of Gate Crasher. Good eye, Nick. Good eye, everyone. <laughs> all right. So what we're looking at here today is probably the first and maybe the only um, three-dimensional first-person shooter for the Coco 3 and uh it looks pretty cool now since i don't like to read and i don't understand things uh there is no better pleasure than to have the person who made the game here as my co-pilot to help <laughs> me play the game so nick is going to coach me along the way here so no um, I'll, I'll run shotgun all right so what are we looking at here this looks a lot like holy crap we got a bad freaking guy right here hold on get down get down get down get to the chopper get down Get down, die! Why won't he die? If it bleeds, we can kill it! Okay, I got him. Yes, I got him. All right, so we got one bad guy. I killed a bad guy. So we are inside the offices of the evil corporation. Yes, that's right. And I eventually have to make my way out by exiting through this lift. 
That's right. There's five floors that you're going to um, cover, and that yellow door is the lift. But it doesn't work until you destroy all the computer terminals on that level, on each level, uh, and then you move up a, a floor. There, oh, there's two, there's, bad guys uh, two there. types of characters you come across. Oh. You get those guys in the in the suits, uh -huh. in, in the black suits. They're the baddies. Um, you got to kill them. Uh, they they sh they're shooting at you as well. The guys in the white shoot, shirts. Shoot! I think I just shot the, a. I, I think yeah. I just shot a programmer. Oh well. <laughs> <laughs> Won't tell anyone. <laughs> the guys in the white shirts are the programmers, and they're the goodies. Okay. So see how you go. It's kind of like the old Wild West movies, right? The good. Uh, I'm just. I think I've just died. Oh, you're out of ammo. I've just died. I ran out of ammo. Homer Simpson yes, laughed at me. So you, uh, yeah. So, uh, so down the bottom, you've got H, which stands for health. Okay. And A stands for ammo. If either of those run out, it's it's mission over. You know what? This animated flame in the background here is actually quite impressive. Save, <laughs> save our world from the totalitarianism of the infiltrating of the enemy and erasing of all computer data on the mind control implant devices. Destroy all of the computer terminals on each floor. And no, I can't even read Oops. it. Okay. And my, and my voice hurts <laughs> at this point. So I'll be back. All right. So. Um, I think it's going to be easier in my voice if maybe I switch to like a dirty, hairy voice. And all right, do you feel lucky, punk? <laughs> Save our world from a totalitarianism by infiltrating the enemy. HQ and erasing all computer data on the mind control implant devices. Destroy all the computer terminals on each floor to reactivate the elevators to the next level. Avoid the innocent programmers and defeat the evil company CEO. You know, it'd be a good voice for this too. Have you ever played Duke Nukem on the PC? No. Oh, uh, Duke Nukem is a good. Um, uh, uh, 3D shooter. So Duke Nukem is kind of a composite of like a, uh, you know, it's kind of like a mix between Schwarzenegger and Dirty Hair, anyways. But you know, Duke, right. Duke Nukem was always like, come get some. All right. Let's, let's rock. <laughs> let's rock. <laughs> you you want to dance? <laughs> I can do Duke Nukem quotes. Okay, I just killed two yeah. bad guys. All yeah, right. that's cool. Yeah, shake it, baby. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, all right. So the little programmer. Oh, here's a bad guy. So I, I suck at aiming and shooting, just like I do in any other PC game. So, okay, I got him. I got him. All right. So the green doors are automatically openable, and the red doors require you to figure out a pass key combination type thing. A free color code. Um, All right, I got out. him. I got him. So what you have to ask yourself is, do you feel lucky? <laughs> well, do you, punk? All right. So um, I'm taking these a holes out. There's nothing here. I need to find now. This is. I know you know you mentioned this to me once before. We have to find a locked room. Here's a health bar. I've got yeah, health, and here's health. some ammo. And Where the hell did the ammo the go? One. Here's the ammo. That's ammo. All right, I got ammo. I like that little pickup sound. It sounds like you just loaded a clip. That's, That's right. That's cool. Digital sound effects. That was, you know, and when, when, when um, Wolfenstein came out, Wolfenstein was basically one of the first, not the firstest, but it was um, one of the earliest first-person shooters on the PC, and it's kind of the one that solidified that genre as a, as a gaming platform. Um, and what was so impressive about Wolfenstein was that it used VGA graphics, so it had very high color screens. Um, it used the ad lib synthesized music in the background, and it also took advantage of the Sound Blaster soundboard for digitized shot sounds and the sounds of the you, you're killing the Nazis and those ammo. guys dying. All right, holy crap, I'm almost out of ammo. I don't like. Nah. <laughs> And now it would be nice if there was like a little cross here too, if you knew you were lined up with the guy. Where did he go? So I guess your cross here is just your gun itself. Your gun needs to be yeah, centered on the back. Yeah, try anything in front. Try moving backwards and forwards with him. That way it keeps him in the middle of the screen. Okay, yeah. I got him. All right. So, <laughs> okay, there's one red. Oh, I got I got it I got it lucky on the first time. That one is red, green, green. So the the combinations are red, green, and blue. Are the different color oh, patterns the three you have to colors, try to guess? Yes. Yeah. But okay. they'll be in different order, yeah. Yeah. Okay. I guess you can oh. kind of see when you're hitting him. It flashes when you're hitting him. Yeah. yeah. 
I'm going forward and backwards. Move out of my way. This guy looks like a yuppie with a freaking sweater and a tie. <laughs> I think I think the uh, the suits require up to three three hits before they die. That's why sometimes you hit them, they flash, but they don't okay. die. So it needs I'm three. Out of, I'm There's out of your ammo. Ah, uh, crap. With those red doors, you might find some more ammo and health. Okay. What do I got here? I have. I think red, there's blue. each color in this one. Hold on, I'm getting shot at. Where the hell is he? Right. Now, if you don't get the code. Oh, on. Yep, there we go. If you don't get the code right in the, in five tries, okay. it resets the code and you try again. So it's a new code each time. Now, what am I doing here? Green. Uh, blue, well, there's green. no red. Blue, blue, red. Oh, okay, found that it. was it. Okay. Computer, computer terminal. So that's your goal. You've got to destroy those. Oh, this is a full room. So rather than turning, just move back and forth. Ah, crap. Oh, you're out of ammo. When was this game released? The um, Gate Crasher? I yeah. think it was um, in 2000. Oh, really? Okay, yeah. So that's relatively so, new for a Coco game. Yeah, I remember going to Penfest 2000, and this was um, the software I'd um, put together and sold at the fest. And there we have it. That was the latest trailer for Popstar Pilot. I just realized that when I switch to commercials, my microphone doesn't work. So you guys missed that on hearing my air guitar sound. So, um, all right, cool. It's a very cool game. Uh, with any luck today, hopefully later on, we can do an unboxing of this as well. And maybe That's a little, right. some little sneak peek of the actual game. But let me try yeah. Gatecrasher one more time and try not to be so horrible at it. Um, it's, you, you know, so if I had a wish list, I would say... Um, Add joystick control. Uh, a crosshair would be cool. And then the ability to strafe, too, like to be able to sidestep. Like if you could hold down the top button and, and sidestep, that would be kind of cool. Oh, crap, I just shot him. What, with, with everything you know now, because 2000 was, what, 16 years ago, is there anything you could do now to make this even better? Um, one thing I'd like to do is, um, if you look at the 3D as, your, um, as the as the, uh, the walls, um, if you look at them carefully, there is a bit of a fisheye look to them, depending okay. on how far away you are from it. Yes, uh, yeah. That that was evident even in John's uh, gloom one, but I have it. It's more evident in mine because of the uh, lower res. I, I use a lower resolution than what what um, John Kowalski's uh, Doom demo does. And that was one of the the, the, the problems. Um, John, John used a higher resolution, um, but to run a full game at that res, it really would slow down. So I chose a lower resolution uh, mode, uh, and the pixels are a bit bigger, and it does emphasize that fish uh, fisheye look a bit, but that was needed to get the uh, the speed of the game up. Right, 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 right. So I'm not sure how many frames per section per second I've got on that. Is it 20 or so? Or Which is pretty good. Okay, I got. Um, I just got ammo. some ammo. Much needed ammo. You're, you're very now, low on health, though. So I'd go yes. into a few more red room, red doors, and uh, yeah. hopefully find um, some health. 
Got it. Don't get hit by him too often. I'm You're trying not hit. to. Little a hole. Oh, I'm hitting you. Gone. Yep, the alarm's on. A little blue square in the top right, to so like a, a, a warning beacon. Dang it! Yeah, you're out. <laughs> you won't be uh, back. Right. <laughs> I won't be back. <laughs> ah, good stuff. So I guess you have to ask yourself: Did, did he get lucky? And the answer is yes, he got lucky. That <laughs> punk. <laughs> Oh, man. Okay. You know what you need to put in here is an Easter egg. and You need to digitize your face and make the evil CEO look like you. <laughs> uh, well, uh, the evil CEO does have a digitized face. But oh, I won't cool. Say who. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I won't say who. <laughs> okay. Has anybody seen the CEO? Uh, not very many people, though. Yeah, it's a shame because I've... I've made the uh, the level maps available on my website, but yeah, I'm not aware of anyone actually playing it all the way through. Um, I'm having a hard time shooting one dude right now. Thank you, frickin' thank you. Holy crap! Yeah, I think when when they're walking across your field, that's pretty hard to hit them. But if you walk or run with them, uh, you wow. keep them centered. There's some ammo. ammo. Yeah, nice yeah if you if you walk with them, you can keep them in the uh, center of the screen, and then you can shoot them a few more times. Red. There we go. Got it. Oh, you got it. Holy yeah. crap! Got you, sucker. I got him. We got ya. We got him. Try going into uh, ah computer. Ah, computer. See that? Okay. Is there one on the other side? No. Yeah. In the, um, in the, oh, uh, I like that. He was right in front is. of me. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Two red. No one's there shooting go. at you. I got it. Uh, yeah, I am lucky. <laughs> and there's that. Oh, there's health. You need that. There's health. I need health and I need ammo. Okay. Ah, computer terminal. That's so this is, I mean, this is very impressive for the hardware platform you had to make this work on. There is no doubt. Um that this is an, an incredible feat of programmery, if that's even a word. <laughs> and it proves that 3D gaming is possible on the color computer. Well, this uh, one allows 360 degree movement. Yes, yes. So I would say that this does make it um, fairly, not only unique, but I would say pretty revolutionary as well. Um, cool stuff. Very cool stuff. Time. Um... And that's ticking down. It's ticking down there. You've got to complete the um, the level be before the timer reaches zero. Okay. So, but is there any indication if you know if you've gotten all the computer terminals, like terminals remaining or anything like that? I think I think there's a, a flashing dot in, in the top right, uh, okay. a yellow, to let you know that go to the yellow door. There we go. So there's here's, the here's, there's the lift. And, if, and, and it's, it's not active yet. It's not active yet. So now you've got to explore the other. There's more doors and there's more friends of yours. Take that. <laughs> he won't be back. <laughs> Stop shooting at me, for the love of Pete. <laughs> I'm out of ammo. All right, I think I've died. So if I had wish list items, it would be joystick control, number one. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's right. The ability to strafe would be nice too. I don't know how important sidestepping is, but I'm just something I'm used to. And I, I think w if I was to redo it, I'd look at trying to make the um, the movement of the um, of the bad of, of the characters a bit uh, less jerky. Okay. So that you, yeah, because they do jump around a fair bit. But. Mm. You know, one thing that, and I don't know how many people are affected by this, but certain 3D games actually give me motion sickness. Like, um, you know, like if you read a book in a car, sometimes you feel like you're uh, yeah. nauseous. Some yeah. 3D games have that effect on me. And the earlier ones specifically, like Wolfenstein 3D, and I think it has something to do with the geometry, where everything was so perfect and so square and so linear that, you know, in order to, to experience three-dimensional stuff that's not in real life, it's an illusion and you're tricking the brain and not everybody's brain can you know completely fall into that illusion so some of the early 3d games actually made me car sick um one of the other features too that i typically turn off in a first person shooter is that um 
Um, Wolfenstein didn't have this. It was perfectly linear, perfectly ge geometrical, and everything just kind of turned. But Doom introduced to this kind of sway, this uh, sway bobbing thing. So it kind of looked like you I... were walking and moving. And I actually find that sometimes that that swaying thing messes with me too. So a lot of times, even on a modern um, first-person shooter, I will sometimes turn off that view. They call it view bobbing or view swaying sometimes. Yeah. Um, sometimes I turn that off because I find that does mess with me. To, this was this is definitely comparable to like Wolfenstein, and let, so this came out in the year 2000, which is not long after yes. Wolfenstein 3D came out. It was mid 90s, or no, maybe it was early 90s when that game came out. But if you look at the horsepower that you needed to run Wolfenstein, you needed like a uh, 486 processor. You needed like four yeah. megabytes of RAM. You had to have a VGA card. There was, um, you know, you needed a Sound Blaster board in order to get the audio. Um, there was a lot of higher end hardware, a lot of bolt on hardware to do this on a PC. So to do this on a stock Coco is, um, is really impressive. I would have yeah. to say technologically it is uh, 1.79 megahertz and an 8 bit CPU. Yeah. Cause what was, uh, what was a 46? 46 was running at at least 33 megahertz minimum of like 33 uh, megahertz. Yeah. At least. You know, so this is this is running at less than two megahertz. That's right. On a no um, sound card. Yeah, yeah. No so. accelerated graphics. So yeah, hence why the, the the whole challenge in the first place about you know can the color computer do a proper three sixty degree um, um, movement um, game? So that's what I was trying to to show. Yeah, yeah, it yeah. Can. I, I guess, and there's some that I haven't really played yet, but I would assume that some of the flight simulators did a similar thing too. And I guess you could look yeah. at like Kronos Rift and, and Rescue and Fractalus. Those could probably also be considered to be true 3D. So, well, they are. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. 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 So are. this is not necessarily the first true, not true really 3D, that, uh, but no. it's probably, you know, uh, it's up there. This is, this, you know, this is good, as good as a flight simulator or anything else as far as a 3D perspective, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the frame rate's higher than those others, but um, and you lower the resolution to do that too. What's, what's I lower the, the resolution to a it's a it's a it's a mode that is not officially um, um, advertised. I think it was a ninety six by. Oh, I'd have to look up on the website what I used, but it was um, it wasn't really a officially a known mode. Okay. So, and I, I only just discover it by randomly poking values into the uh, the video chip, and up comes this resolution. I thought, well, that looks good. So, wow. full 16, 16 colors. Yeah, yeah. Um, and it takes up less. I can't remember how much uh, RAM it was, but it was uh, a lot more economical on on RAM, so it was easier to uh, to manipulate. Ooh. We will call this video a wrap. I hope you did enjoy this preview of Gate Crasher. This is um, technically, we are now in October, but we're continuing the September month of Coco Gaming Marathon, where we're just trying to release as much Coco content on a regular basis as possible, um, as is allowed by international law too, because we do have to consider things like Interpol and um, you know things like that, the United Nations. So we cannot release too much content. Um, without violating certain treaties so we're trying to do what we can with the coco thank you nick for um for helping me understand this game and taking me through it it was really and thank you for making this game because this is uh it's a nice piece of software and uh also I'd like to thank um emmett brown uh from back to the future uh, arnold schwarzenegger and um <laughs> all the other stars that also uh dr emmett dr emmett dr. Emmett L. brown here great scott 1.21 <laughs> gigawatts marty what are you doing there god this is heavy doc why is everything so heavy in the future is there something wrong with the gravitational pull of the earth and <laughs> uh, uh, so w we'll be back with another video all right <laughs> <laughs> this is going to be uh, your most exciting video yet. <laughs> <laughs> Probably as good as that's going to get. <laughs> I think I need to leave the room. <laughs> All right, I'm going to take this from the top. <sighs> Usa. Okay. Breathe. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here we go. So let's, let's, practice, let's practice some of these voices here. So we're going to start <laughs> off with the slide. Then we're going to go to the... the uh, for, for a long time, it had, it had been debated that the color computer could, could create true 3D game along with 
the lines of the PC classics of Doom and Wolf 3D. But it is now. But there is now evidence. Okay. But there is now evidence to prove. <laughs> you gotta stop laughing. <laughs> Many said the color computer was too slow to do the necessary 3D calc- I can't read this fluidly. <laughs> All right. Now the great John Kowalski came along and made the impossible possible. Great Scott! He developed an algorithm that did the necessary calculations fast enough to create the good demo that was called Gloom! And it took 1.21 gigawatts to make this happen. Leaked information has revealed that each implant has a means of remote control via the low orbit satellite system. I'm starting to sound like Dirty Harry. <laughs> so, so what you have to ask yourself is, do you feel don't like me. a punk? <laughs> Six shots of five. So. <laughs> <laughs> we got plenty of boop blooper material. <laughs> Oh my god. Curtis is missing out. <laughs> Small microcontrollers implanted into the human skull acting as a co-processor to the brain. I don't that doesn't read right. Okay. <laughs> Excellent blooper. Okay. For a long time it had been debated if the color computer could create a true 3D game along the lines of the great 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 the great but it is now evidence to prove. Beep. For a long time, it had been debated if the color computer could create true 3D game graphics along the lines of the greats like Doom and 3D. And I screwed that up.